Gotta love some onomatopoeic game naming. Crunch, named with an alternate spelling, much like it's either a breakfast cereal or something to do with King K. Rool's crew from those Donkey What's It games, is a game about exactly that. Going Crunch. If I thought it would pick up well on Mike, I'd crunch some potato chips at this time just to let you know what I'm on about. As you can probably expect from the old school graphics, this game is designed for two concepts. Speed and difficult. That's all you need in Crunch. Forget the all caps. The opening quote-unquote cinematic isn't that heavy on the details, but you do learn the gist. Six sphere-looking things with an eye apiece are locked in the standard glass tubes of unsavory experimentation when suddenly all hell breaks loose and they get jettisoned into the sewers. Fortunately, your, um, whatever the hell this thing is, is adept at moving through water, disgusting as it may be, by moving up, down, and sideways in ways unbounded by the laws of physics. Bounded, however, by the walls closing in on you like some kind of claustrophobic nightmare. You see, Crunch is the kind of game that's designed for the hardest of the hardcore. Folks who spend days, months, and years optimizing routes and nailing frame-perfect tricks. So the premise might seem simple, just get from point A to point B, the actual path is filled with explosive spikes, spinning blades, monsters of various descriptions, a real death trap if there ever was one. That's where the game really shines. Crunch doesn't deal in luck, it doesn't deal in quirks, it doesn't deal in bullshit at all. Instead, the only thing standing between you and a better score is your own ability. Sure, it might take you two or three or a few more or a dozen or a couple dozen tries to get through a particular segment, especially when they're introducing new mechanics and you don't know if it's a friend or foe yet. It's a speedrunner's dream as everything is controlled by strict, unchanging timing and can be predicted to the millisecond. The primary impediment to just slamming through the course is, in fact, the little bit of recoil you suffer when you bounce off of an object, which in the majority of situations is just enough to prevent you from boosting through a narrow gap before, well, crunch. Crunch doesn't need much in terms of graphics or music. They're all stripped back to an early 16-bit standard in this particular release. Instead, it favors blisteringly difficult gameplay and enough deaths to choke Jamie Farr's camel. It's a reflection of the current trend of life counters going up rather than down. The extreme difficulty of the old generation now no longer needs constraints on continues and whatnot. Rather, the goal is efficiency in the face of extreme adversity. Again, a speedrunner's dream. The feeling of intense engagement I got while playing Crunch reminded me of other struggles I've had with great games like N+, where pixel-perfect accuracy and split-second timing are the order of the day. It's a wonderful feeling, and one that I hope you'll sit down to enjoy in the very near future. Just watch out for, well, let's be reasonable here, everything.